Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. untrained eye, this EKG may resemble a normal rhythm, but this is actually one of the more rare phenomenons that can occur. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom lead here and see if we can identify what it is. Now the first thing I like to do is find out how fast this rhythm is going. So I need to make this into a six second strip. The way we do that is we take two lead groupings, which equals five seconds, and we'll add five large boxes beyond that to make a, our six second strip. Now that I've got my six second strip, let's go ahead and count the R waves to determine our rate. So I'm getting a rate of about 70 BPM. Next thing I'll do is take a look at the waveforms here and see if I can identify a P wave for every QRS complex and if the R to R interval is consistent. I am seeing a P wave present for each QRS complex, however the PR interval is very, very short. My R to R interval is also very consistent. There is one particular feature of this rhythm though that stands out. Let's go ahead and take an even closer look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now besides that short PR interval, you're noticing that the QRS complex here is uncharacteristically wide and it's got a bizarre wave shape to it. That 45 degree inflection there is actually a characteristic of a very rare cardiac conduction issue known as Wolf-Parkinson-White. We're seeing the 45 degree inflection here because in Wolf-Parkinson-White, instead of the normal SA to AV through bundle of hiss into the Purkinje fibers conduction that we would normally attribute to like a sinus rhythm, in Wolf-Parkinson-White, there's actually an accessory pathway around the AV node in the bundle of hiss, and this is known as the bundle of Kent. Unlike the AV node, the bundle of Kent has no rate control properties. So you really run into problems here when these patients go into tachydysrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. It's very easy for these folks to get out of control with rate. And because this is an accessory pathway, a lot of your typical antidysrhythmics are actually dangerous to use. So for these folks, you cannot use things like diltiazem. You cannot use things like amiodarone or even beta blockers. Uh, the only medication that's actually safe for use here in the case of a atrial fibrillation or a tachydysrhythmia with wolf parkinson white is procainamide, which is a very old medicine. But I digress, this patient is not in a malignant tachydysrhythmia, so let's take a look at the rest of the EKG and see if there's anything else that's going on. The first lead grouping I like to look at are the anterior leads or the anteroseptal leads. These are leads V1 through V4. 
Now looking at this, in V1, the R wave is actually pointed downward. For this particular patient, because of the Wolf Parkinson White, a downward deflected R wave in V1 usually will imply a right atrioventricular pathway around the AV node. Unfortunately, with Wolf Parkinson White, you can have multiple extra nodal pathways, and sometimes you know which way they're going, sometimes you don't. Um, really, there's no difference here in treatment. But beyond that, I'm seeing a little bit of FC segment depression in V4. Uh, but otherwise, it's a pretty benign lead grouping. In my inferior leads, leads 2, 3, and AVF, I'm not seeing anything jumping out at me that we haven't already mentioned. And then finally, in my lateral leads, maybe a skosh of ST depression in V6 or V5, but really nothing to write home about. My diagnosis of rhythm for static cardiology is going to be normal sinus rhythm, with Wolf Parkinson White. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario now. So you're dispatched to a private residence for a 39-year-old male with chest pain. He denies any trauma or cardiac history. Unfortunately, because we discovered Wolf Parkinson White in the field, this is definitely something that's going to warrant a cardiology follow-up, but let's keep moving on. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure 166 over 80, Pulse 71, respiratory rate 19, SpO2 97% on room air, and his pain is currently rated as an 8 out of 10. You obtain the 12 lead ECG, and we see the rhythm above. Now, as the majority of your points in static cardiology are actually derived from correct treatment of a patient, we must first determine if they're stable or unstable. For my criteria for instability, I use the acronym CHAD. And this, of course, stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on my patients presenting vital signs as well as this complaint, he meets absolutely no criteria for CHAD. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be a stable sinus rhythm with Wolf Parkinson White. Let's go ahead and now take a look at the treatment. Now, just like with all my other scenarios, I'll begin my treatment by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV, O2, monitor. Because this patient is stable, I won't be administering any electrical therapy to him. And that's besides the point, he's in sinus rhythm. There's really no need to perform any sort of electrical intervention in most sinus dysrhythmias. The only exception, of course, would be a sinus bradycardia that would be symptomatic. However, I will follow the ACS pathway because he is complaining of chest pain. So the ACS pathway involves the administration of nitroglycerin, 0.4 milligrams sublingual, every five minutes with a maximum dose of three tablets or three sprays, aspirin, 324 milligrams PO, and then consideration of morphine, two to four milligrams, or fentanyl, 50 micrograms IV push for additional pain control. I could then maybe consider hanging IV fluids at a TKO or KVO rate. Now in real life, if I had a patient in Wolf Parkinson White that they didn't know about before, so this is a new finding, I would certainly put pads on them in the anticipation of a malignant tachydysrhythmia and at least have my antidysrhythmics of choice, aka procainamide, ready to go. But because this is static, the patient's condition won't change. And finally, rapid transport. That's it. If you like this card, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can make your own custom playlist using my videos to help you study with for your National Registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.